You know, maybe the man who built a terror tunnel for his chocolate river to run through isn't the guy we want to be buying chocolate from. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be ranking the three films of the Wonka franchise as part of my franchise rankography series. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. So what is a rankography exactly? Well, it's my ranking of a filmography, whether that be a director's output, an actor's appearances, or even an entire franchise. My rankographies are based on personal preference, and I rank movies according to how much I enjoyed them rather than any specific technical merit or attribute. Remember, this is just my ranking, not the ranking, so be sure to post your own personal ranking of the Wonka franchise in the comments below. Usually, when I do these franchise rankings, we're dealing with truly interconnected series of films. But today, we're talking about a set of movies that comprise more of a spiritual franchise than anything else. All three movies are based on Roald Dahl's 1964 children's novel, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, with two of the three movies being direct adaptations and the most recent film being a prequel to Dahl's story. This tale is one of childhood wonder and magic, and the three movies capture that in very, very different ways. Keeping in line with the non-traditional franchise connection among these films, the ease of my ranking was a little different for me than normal, because I absolutely love one of these movies, absolutely hate one of them, and think the other one's just alright. But which is which? I've already reviewed all three of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below and also link them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this rankography started. Coming in at number three, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is one of the two Wonka films I've seen in theaters on opening night, but the only one in the franchise that I hate. If you're familiar with my channel and watch my videos, you know that that's something I almost never say. I may strongly dislike a movie, but hate is reserved for the worst of the cinematic worst. I realize this may be a bit of a controversial opinion, especially among very young millennial and Gen Z filmgoers, but there's very little that's redeeming about this movie for me. It's intended to be a slightly more faithful adaptation of the book, which I suppose is an admirable prospect for doll purists, but the film still changes things up to add some extremely unnecessary backstory for Willy Wonka. You'd think that Tim Burton and Roald Dahl would be a perfectly matched pairing, with Burton's signature gothic fantasy aesthetic highlighting the dark humor present in Dahl's writing, but somehow it doesn't work at all. Burton's version is bathed in this cold, industrial artificiality that lacks any of the warmth or magic from the original story. That's certainly disappointing, but the worst part of it all is Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka. When this movie came out, he was still riding the Pirates of the Caribbean popularity wave. I liked him and was looking forward to what he could bring to the role of Wonka, but man is this an awful rendition of the character. He's weird for the sake of being weird, but without any charm, humor, or intrigue. Just a flat, Michael Jackson-esque character who takes an already iffy movie and absolutely obliterates it. Coming in at number two, Wonka. I'll be completely honest, I pretty much knew that this film was going to end up in the second spot going in. It was never going to surpass the original, but I doubted it was going to be worse than Tim Burton's version. So the number two spot was not a surprise, but where exactly it fell on the Wonka spectrum was a bit of a surprise for me. This was not a movie I was looking forward to, and the trailers increased my trepidation tenfold, but it was actually decent. Not great, but more than just okay. It was good. The Paddington similarities are even more numerous than we could have guessed, and the excessive stylization is a bit off-putting at times, but it's still an entertaining movie. This is a musical, far more of a traditional musical than either of the other two films, and while the songs aren't as catchy or memorable as one might hope, they're still quite enjoyable in the moment. Perhaps the most surprising aspect of this film is Timothy Chalamet's performance as Willy Wonka. The trailers had me very concerned in this regard. He seemed incredibly miscast with those awkward, forced line deliveries, but he was mostly okay in the film. He's still a bit wonky with some of the wackier Wonka-isms, but he was much better than I ever could have imagined he'd be. This film is a Willy Wonka origin story, and although it is something stylistically separate from the rest of the franchise, it can be viewed as a spiritual prequel to the 1971 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 
It's missing the darker edge to its undertone, and we've still got some missing steps between this naive and ultra-optimistic Wonka and the playful but sardonic and somewhat misanthropic version of the character we see Gene Wilder portray, but the various references and callbacks make for a fun easter egg hunting watch for Willy Wonka fans. So that means my number one Wonka film is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I would love the adaptation of the story that was literally disowned by the author, wouldn't I? With the story changes and shift in focus from Charlie to Willy Wonka, it certainly got a slightly different vibe to it than the original story. But just like with Stanley Kubrick's author-hated adaptation of The Shining, I think the changes improved the story for the screen. Of the three Wonka films, this is the only one I didn't see in theaters, since it was a bit before my time, but it is the one I grew up watching. Admittedly, I'm sure that comes with some nostalgic bias, but it's tough to beat the feel-good magic of this bizarre film. With its memorable songs, the Oz-like reveal of the chocolate room, and the inviting magic of its story, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory really captures the warmth and childhood wonder of this tale. But this film isn't just a sickly saccharine family film. It offers up a very interesting tonal blend, mixing that fantastical magic with something darker. There are some unsettlingly humorous things that happen throughout this film, and even some downright creepy scenes like the nightmarish boat ride. It's also a movie that nestles nicely into ambiguity. We never know the true fate of any of the other kids, and even Willy Wonka himself is left in an enigma, with this film being the only one of the three movies that never feels the need to dig into his past. Willy Wonka's wonderful here, with Gene Wilder pulling off the tonal dichotomy of the character perfectly. He's friendly and inviting, but also dark and sardonic. Quirky, but never over the top. So we end up with an impeccably crafted mixture of a film that's downright scrumdiddly umptious. Alright, so that's my rankography of the Wonka franchise. Five golden tickets, three movies, and one eccentric chocolatier. What does your ranking look like? I'd love to see some reasoning for your order, so be sure to post it in the comments below. Remember, I've already reviewed all three of these movies, so you can check those videos out if you want some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this rankography, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more rankographies like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.